key drivers of school improvement, high quality learning and teaching, a strong school culture, and a staff aligned to that mission do not exist in a vacuum. In order for these components to be effective, the school must have the systems and the infrastructure in place to make sure that staff members have the right plans, processes, and resources necessary to achieve their school improvement goals. To move closer to a vision and to improve student outcomes, leaders create plans and systems that outline what needs to be done, who needs to do it, and how it will get done. In well-functioning schools, these systems and processes can be invisible, but when they are broken, they can prevent a school from realizing its goals. In planning and operations, we will explore some of the actions leaders can take to support schools and to sustain high levels of student achievement. The first lever within the planning and operations category focuses on identifying school-wide goals with clear and measurable metrics that will allow the leader and other members of the school community to identify priorities and the strategies they can use to implement each of these priorities. And it also allows them to track their progress towards goals. An effective leadership team works together to build a common understanding of their school's needs and they get input from teachers, from students, and families all in service of creating an action plan to address those needs. Then the schedule group will be looking at the staff survey results that happened last Wednesday PD, taking feedback and continuing to evolve what next year's schedule looks like based on both staff and student feedback. Every year we change and grow and we ask ourselves what's working and what's not working and how can we continually better meet the needs of our students. So it's important that we have kind of like a, we have a shared vision and that these are just not my goals, they're the goals that we want for our learning community. It is important for us that all students are growing. We want to make sure that um, no one has slow growth or no growth. We want to make sure that we accelerate growth. Every morning there is morning collaborative in which the teachers can bring student work to their teams. This is when we update our data wall and there's a huge wall um, that has every student on there with pieces of all their assessments. I go up and I look at the data wall myself and if I'm not seeing the type of growth that I expect, we start asking each other questions like why is that happening? What might we need? What kind of acceleration or intervention is missing here? So now if you take a holistic viewpoint of our school, what are the changes we should make? And what I found is that we've got a staff that wants to attack those gaps. And once we see that pretty clearly, then now how do we get there? And how do we create places for staff to like dig in and create those changes? Because that's ultimately who our staff and teachers are, is they want to be a part of that change process. Once priorities have been identified and specific goals have been determined, the teams identify specific strategies that will support successful implementation. The TLF can help leaders and their teams assess how time is currently being used to identify any lost instructional time. How is time being used in your building? Where are you spending your time as the leader? How much time are you able to spend on instructional leadership? When I first came to Hamilton, one of the first changes that I made was to the schedule. Prior to me being here, they did not have um, school-wide professional development. But because of the change, the new standards and new assessments, the only way to learn that is to do it cohesively as a staff and in teams, in professional uh, learning communities. And so I changed the schedule to implement team meetings for all grade levels and this professional development throughout the year was mandatory. Principals want to spend most of their time improving teaching and learning, but if the systems of a school don't work, um, then you never have time to do those things and do them well. How can you free up the, the principal and the vice principals also to do the work of instruction? There are a lot of those systems already in place here, but that's something that I'm always looking to improve, especially around my own personal time management and really thinking about how to best leverage my time so that I'm doing the highest leverage work. Time is one of the most valuable resources that a principal has. And just like any resource, it is also limited. This lever also helps teams think about and make adjustments to how they plan the schedule. Do teachers have common weekly planning times? Do all students have access to advanced classes? Um, Courtney in sixth grade, this is her annual review. I think since she's been moved to 600, she's done a lot better. 
So we are currently going through a redesign process where we're examining how we use time and space at our school site and how can we be using it differently to continue to meet our student achievement goals and outcomes for our students. We will be going from a five period day to a six period day. We'll be going from a pretty traditional schedule to a block schedule. Members of the instructional leadership team will solicit feedback through a survey and then the ILT will work through the survey results that the staff submitted and to identify common trends and ideas. And that has gone back and forth pretty deliberately to make sure that the perspective of all staff and students are included. The next lever of planning and operations allows transformational principals to consider how they use their resources through budgeting, external partnerships, and facilities management in order to support their school-wide goals and plan. Our budget has afforded us to put particular emphasis on human capital. I think that's important as a school leader to make sure most of our money is spent on um, teachers because they're the ones that make the real difference every day with the students. They have the most contact with the students. The rest of the money, a large portion of it, goes to professional development and is used in order to do the curriculum development institute work, also to run the after-school retreats, to also provide teachers with recognition, um, remuneration for doing extra planning work, such as for parent meetings. I need, as a leader, to plan ahead to know that that's important to me. That activity fits in with my mission. That has, is more effective, but it costs more money. So then that means I need to prioritize that in my budget. I also think leveraging partnerships is critical, especially if you have a tight budget. Another thing as a leader I think is important is developing partnerships that extend outside the school walls, whether that's with central office or with partners such as law firms or community organizations that donate food or provide mental health services. All of these things contribute to the betterment of your school and also to the improvement of your students. Through leveraging partnerships, Principal Dokal has led the school through a project that will substantially expand and modernize the building and its facilities. One simple way to identify building needs is just walk it. Get out of the office and walk it. Be present. It was very clear the way some of the space was used needed to be altered and updated. It's strategic. A leader needs to leverage partners, have clear communication with central office, and be very inviting and welcoming and hope that that will also spread your, your message of what you need. We want to develop well-rounded students. And so I look at the programming that we have, the, the opportunities and experiences that we have for our students to go through. And I wanted to make sure that every student had the opportunity to participate in something outside of the classroom. Like, what gives them joy to come to school? And that really was kind of the impetus for developing some of these outside classroom spaces. You're going to be writing a thank you note to a volunteer. We had 16 people come and work extremely hard last week to build this entire thing. The final lever of the planning and operations category includes key principal actions around managing relationships with the school district. Principal Chandra Bird Wright at Dunn Technology Academy on the south side of Chicago has also managed to leverage her school's relationship to their community to partner on a massive renovation and modernization project to address their most pressing facilities needs. After successfully identifying the school's facility needs, we're getting brand new doors, we're getting brand new ceiling tiles. Principal Bird Wright and her leadership team sought support from staff, families, and community members to approach their local legislators about funding a new building for Dunn. So we have a lot of parents and community members that were very involved in seeing that Dunn got a new building, a new structure for student use. We had a new building community that was actually formed by parents and by community members. And they would go and visit um, the board meetings, go downtown and rally and ask that Dunn be given a new building. 
to our local government and our alderwoman was extremely supportive in this effort. Over the years, she's always said, Principal Bird Wright, what is it that you need? Do you think this is gonna be enough? And I was able to tell her, here's what the students' needs are. Here's what we need to make it work. Um, and whatever it is that we asked for, she fought hard so that we could get it. In addition to securing a larger building for the school, Principal Bird Wright also used the opportunity to advocate for and ultimately receive the funding to transition Dunn into one of Chicago Public Schools STEM pilot schools. So included in the modernization project is going to be funds to use to become a STEM Magnet Academy. We'll also get funds so that we can implement STEM programs, we can have an engineering program, we'll be able to have um, to continue and to fund our technology magnet program. We're going to have a brand new um, STEM lab, so we're going to have a brand new engineering lab, and then we're also going to have a new science lab in that building as well as a brand new state-of-the-art gym, which is gonna free up some space. The modernization and upcoming renovation of Dunn Technology Academy was a direct result of the principal's ability to manage relationships with the local community and effectively engage district leadership to ensure that their school goals were in line with the district priorities, both important aspects of the TLF's planning and operations category. Together, each of these planning and operations levers create the foundation for a school to implement consistent and high quality learning experiences for students and staff that exist within the previous three categories of the TLF.